and ask them to coach them in something that is actually not yet what they should focus on, what we call a bottleneck, right? For example, when you build a PC, even if you upgrade your, your GPU a lot, maybe you're getting bottlenecked by your CPU, by your processor. In coaching, it's the same. A lot of players focus on what they see in the, in the YouTube videos, the content creators and the coaches and what they say. And usually that's not actually what they need to change to improve. So they are hitting a wall. So in the first session ever that we're going to have to, I'm going to focus on the first wall that I think most of my students will have. And that is what I call the auto and mechanics. And the title would be too long, but this also includes like what I call inputs, right? So if you guys have ever played a shooter game, the first thing that a shooter coach would tell you or a shooter player will tell you is, yeah, you got to aim at the head. You got to keep your crosshair at the head. Well, in thank you <laughs> yeah yeah thank you so like i was saying um league of legends players have an issue which is uh they don't focus on mechanics as much as they should in any other esport and half of it is is correct right because if you compare league to any other esport most other esports have like you know higher rpm higher mechanic um expression i guess but the thing is um, the reason why League of Legends has less of a mechanical expression is only because in the highest level, everybody's mechanics is so good that they stop mattering as much. The playing field is leveled. So this, the mechanical ceiling in League of Legends is not that high. But the mechanical floor is not very low either. In other words, in if you go to an esport like Smash or, you know, any shooter or even rhythm games like Osu, how good you can get mechanically doesn't have an, an end. You can keep getting better and better and better. But in League, you sort of hit a wall in like pro play level and challenger that there's not much room to improve mechanically. So therefore, players mistakenly assume that mechanics don't matter that much. But the, th the truth is, until you reach that wall, you, you should focus a lot on mechanics because they actually do matter insanely a lot. Okay, So that's what we're going to focus on today. And let's turn on the stream again. Okay. <clears throat> so first thing I want to teach is we're going to focus on learning the fundamentals from the ground up. So we're going to forget about words like, you know, buzzwords, like or walking, kiting, you know, even when people say spacing, we're going to forget, forget about all of that because it's like we're going to try to learn the mechanics of inputs and then you're going to create your own words and and you're going to like in, instinctively know when and how to use these concepts without having to learn the high level concepts themselves. It's easier to learn the low level stuff and then apply it everywhere instead of trying to learn these isolated high level concepts, okay? So, with the rules that you will see here, you don't need anything else, okay? And as I was saying, do only lower rank players need this guy? No. Like, if you're below Grandmaster, chances are, and even if you're above Grandmaster, chances are that you haven't reached that mechanical ceiling yet. So, everything that you will be seeing here will probably help you a lot to win more games. When I see my students play, I have had many, many sessions in which mechanical mistakes actually matter way more than poor weight management, way more than things like macro. Or things like that. I have seen countless students have like, for example, they have a free double kill level 1 or level 3 or whatever in the lane and they just don't get it because of bad right clicks. And then they ask me like, how could I have carried this game? Like, it was late game and I should have rotated to dragon maybe? And the truth is, no, like, you just lost a free double kill early, you would have snowballed, right? Just because of bad right clicks. So we, we will start with some basics but before we start with the basics and this is going to be a uh, an interesting one in this session i want to do something else first i want everyone here to go to the pc settings and these are the window settings and you're going to type mouse and you're going to go to mouse settings once you're in mouse settings we're going to do something that is going to improve your muscle memory 
part of being good in a and you know any esport game with a mouse is learning how to have uh, muscle memory with your mouse. That means that every time you do a movement with your mouse, it will be expected how much the mouse will move in the screen, the cursor. And that is only achievable if you don't have what we call mouse acceleration. So there's not enough time to get into the how and why. But for now, what we will say, you can DM me about it later if you want, but what we will say is you go to additional mouse options, and here you go to pointer options, which is the third tab. And this option has to be off, which is enhanced pointer precision. So this option is what we call mouse acceleration in esports and any esport player or 99% of them have it turned off especially in shooter games a lot of league players don't know about it because league is more casual but any esport players that actually use their mouse a lot to play esports like an fps or whatever they have this off in fact most games like valorant turn this off by default when you open the game league is old so they don't so this is mouse accel you gotta turn it off then press apply okay so now your mouse will feel different, but once you get used, it's going to be way easier to guide to do anything uh, input related. So let's start with some basic concepts about auto attacks. Okay. Number one is what we call the auto attack range. So the issue with auto attack range is the following. Range is what we call a high skill ceiling stat. So you know, and bear with me, I don't have the best handwriting. So you know how in, in League of Legends we have stats, you know, HP, mana, whatever. There are stats that don't require any thinking or ability to use them, such as, you know, AD, or if you're a mage, HP. Why? Because you're going to just throw an ability, it's going to be more, like, do, doing more damage if you have more AD or AP, and whatever. No thought process or skill involved. There are, there are you know, the next step is something like HP, because if you have more HP, you gotta learn how to use it wisely and see it as a resource and, you know, soak more damage for your teammates. Okay, it requires some skill. But then you have the maximum skill stats, which are two of them. So it's range and attack speed. So these two stats require actually a lot of skill to use, because think about it. Let's say that you're a champion that has some range, X. But you're hitting your target like inside your max range. This would be your max range. Even if Riot comes out with a patch tomorrow and buffs your range like this, because you were hitting inside the range in the first place, this range buff is gonna do nothing to you. Right? So put it to put it in an other words, unless you're hitting targets from your max range, you're not using the range in the first place. Okay. Secondly, the same happens with attack speed. Unless you're hitting on the max attack speed with your actual physical clicks in the mouse, you're actually not using the attack speed in the first place. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Riot, Riot certainly knows this. And in fact, when Riot buffs the, the range of an ability or champion, the win rate of, like, the range of the auto attack or ability of a champion, if it gets buffed, the win rate of the champion only get, goes up in Diamond Plus. Did you know that? For example, let's say they buff the range of the auto attack of, I don't know, like, uh, Misfortune tomorrow by 25. Her win rate in Challenger will go up by 2 or 3%. Her win rate in Bronze will stay the exact same. It won't change at all. Because the Bronze player wasn't even using the max range in the first place. So they don't care. So the first thing that I will tell you that I see a lot of my students do wrong is you gotta use the max range of your stuff. Put yourself in the max range and actually use it. Once you use it wisely, it is the most powerful stat in the game, okay? And another thing is that every champion has a max range, no matter no matter if you're melee or range. Like, melee is not actually a true thing in League. There's no melee champions in League. Every champion has a range number. And, you know, they vary, you know. Leon has 125, which is the lowest possible in the game. Karen has a bit more, because his sword is, like, bigger, I don't know. Um, also, Riven, when she ults, she has more range in her auto attack. Then you have the range, right? The lowest ADC is 500. Then you have this is like the standard ADC range. And this is the biggest ADC range. Outside of like something like the Kog'Maw W at max level or like Jinx Q at max level. For comparison, by the way, Astral Q has double Caitlyn out attack, right? Almost. So it's quite a lot. By, uh, and in game, either A key or sometimes X key, depending on how you have it set up. Uh, we'll show you your attack range, including the current modifiers, you know, Rapid Fire Cannon, Lethal Temple. 
And this is a really important one for what we call spacing. I know you said forget about buzzwords, but for hitting at the max range or spacing, how they call it. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this. Actually, the thickness of the target hitbox will change your auto attack range. Okay. So in other words, um, this training dummy that we're seeing here has a hitbox like this. And you can auto attack uh, dummies or champions or whatever. Like you, you can auto attack units when your auto attack range actually touches the border of the dummy. So here, Garen is actually wasting a little bit of auto attack range because he could have been hitting from here. Now, Vayne here, you see utilizing the max range uh, properly. See how she's hitting from actually the border of the hitbox? So this means that if the enemy is uh, fatter, like thicker, you can actually hit them from farther away. Like, for example, against a Cho'Gath, you can hit them from farther away, okay? So funnily enough, um, the best way of doing this is actually checking your range like this and making sure you're, like, touching the border. Okay. The abilities work differently. So abilities in League, each ability is coded independently, like differently, but most abilities in League, and there are exceptions, but most abilities in League can be used and or will hit the enemy only when the ability actually touches the center of the hitbox of the enemy. So remember how I said that with auto attacks, see how the auto attack is going in the air and you're touching the border? An ability, however, touches the border and doesn't hit the enemy, see? We're touching the same pixel, but we're not hitting the enemy. This is because abilities need to hit the middle of the hitbox. Again, there are exceptions. For example, Elise Q in the last patch got a change above in which they made it so that now Elise Q can be casted from the edge. So it matches her out attack. But most abilities gotta touch the middle, okay? Um... This also happens with, so see now it's touching the middle and it's doing damage, see? So this happens with all, most point and click abilities. So for example, if you have an EQ, you gotta touch the middle of the hitbox of the enemy no matter what, or an EW. So this means that if the enemy is bigger, you're not gonna be able to hit them from farther away like you would have with an auto attack, okay? So now something really important, which is cooldowns and animations. A lot of lower level players mix up cooldowns and animations and like they don't properly separate them you gotta separate them in your brain okay so what do i mean by this so both abilities and attacks when i say attacks i mean auto attacks okay it's just quicker to say auto attacks sorry attacks <laughs> they have a cooldown and an animation speed um and they are not they are not like linked to each other necessarily okay so you can for example cancel an animation and make the animation speed lower, but you cannot cancel a cooldown. The cooldown is just hard-coded in, in League. Similarly, auto attacks have a cooldown as well, right? Like, what is the cooldown of an auto attack, guys? It's just the attack speed, right? It's a way of saying the same thing, right? Auto attack cooldown is determined by the attack speed. An ability cooldown is determined by the ability haste. So, these are the same thing. Ability haste is just cooldown for, for auto attacks, okay? They're the same. The thing is, this is where we start getting different uh, stuff. Because if we make a graph here, imagine you use an ability. Let's say that you use an EQ. If you use an EQ, it has an animation, and then it has a cooldown until you can use it again, right? What I'm saying here is that when you use an auto attack, the attack speed will actually reduce the, uh, the animation and the cooldown at the same time. Whereas ability haste only reduces the cooldown, but not the animation. So if you're Annie and you get ability haste, the only thing that mean that it means is that this will come sooner, right? But if you get attack speed, and these are auto attacks, now let's give the example of auto attacks, this is attack speed, and you get more attack speed, not only the next auto attack will come sooner, but also every animation of auto attacks will be like thinner, like faster, okay? So that's the main difference between attack speed and and uh, ability haste and the cooldowns are not linked to each other they don't affect each other so you can and should always recharge several cooldown several cooldowns at once linking them together that means that imagine in your brain that you have like you know the auto attack the q the w whatever each ability 
and each one of them has a different cooldown and animation and whatever, right? Like this one might be longer and have a longer cooldown. The idea is that at the end, when you output damage or use abilities, you end up creating a final timeline that mixes the, these all together without affecting each other. So for example, you have like the out attack, the Q at the same time, like right after, right? So while you're waiting for your next out attack, you're already using the Q. So you're recharging more cooldowns at once. Is this clear? One of the main reasons why my lower ELO students, when I watch them play, they lose, amount, they lose a lot of damage output. So for example, we have a fight in the bot lane. I could have done, I don't know, 800 damage in that fight, if you put me there, with the same items and, and level everything, right? Whereas they ended up doing like 450 damage, like half of, half of what I would have done. So why? Well, partially it's because of this. Because they are doing just not linking stuff together. So for example, let's say you're Kane. A really clear example that I see every time I coach a Kane that is like below Master, they do this. Which is, they walk up to someone and then they W and then Q. Well, what if you Q first and then W? When you're casting W, you're recharging your Q cooldown, Q cooldown and you'll have it again. And what if you then ult and when you're inside the ult, you're recharging the W cooldown and the Q cooldown. So when you leave the ult, you have another Q and another W, right? So I can use Q like three times or more and W twice. Whereas if you just do something like W, Q, and then R, now you're not really recharging a lot because after you leave R, you're probably not gonna, or even worse, let's say you R here and then Q, right? I have seen this a lot. Then while you're in the R, you're not recharging any cooldown of anything. Like W is still gonna be on cooldown when you leave. You you never used it, right? So I see this a lot when I coach people. So you gotta, you know, order your abilities and link them in such a way, with auto attacks by the way, that you maximize the amount of output damage. This is huge for League of Legends, guys. However, animations are linked all together. Okay, you know how I said that cooldowns, you can recharge more than one cooldown at the same time. Like you can have Q and W on cooldown and recharge both, right? Animations are not like that. You can only use one animation at a time, no matter what. So in League of Legends, you can never use two animations at the same time. And if you think you can, I know what you're thinking. What about Riven? I will explain. If you think you can, it's only because you're not thinking about it the right way. Your champion can only do one animation at a time. If you can use two abilities at the same time, it's only because one of them has no animation. Okay? Or to, or to put it more like in easier terms or more clearly, abilities have both like a casting time or channeling time and then the visual animation. The visual animation doesn't matter at all. What we care about is the casting time. Your champion can only do one casting or like true animation at the same time. Like, for example, one true animation is the first half of your auto attack. When you're doing the first half of your auto attack, no matter how hard you, hard you try, you're never going to be able to cast an ability that has a channel time. But some abilities don't. For example, let me give you an example. Kai'Sa, Kai'Sa uh, Q or ZE. These abilities have no channel time. So they can be casted during your auto attack. But any other ability, for example, set Q, you gotta wait until the auto attack went through and then he will cast Q. Why? Because Q has a channel time. So anything in League that has a channel time or like true animation can only be used when there's nothing else happening. In fact, even walking is like an animation. Like if you cast set Q, you will stop walking. But if you cast set E, you will not stop walking. Same for Kai'Sa. If you cast Kai'Sa Q, because he has no channel time, you don't stop walking. But if you cast Kai'Sa W, he has a channel time, so you will stop walking. Okay? So the only reason that you can do like animation linking or so with Riven is that her casting time of abilities doesn't match her visual animation. So like the casting time already finished and you can like use another ability or whatever even though she's still visually jumping or whatever, but that's just a visual side. What it means for Riven is that, for example, uh, for Riven, let's say Riven E or, you know, whatever, like her third Q, even if the channel time is like this, her visual animation continued for a little bit. So you can just use another ability here, even though this was just visual. It doesn't matter, it's just visual, okay? 
By the way, this happens with almost every game. It's not just League. <laughs> so let's start. Let's finish the, the theoretical boring stuff and start with actual stuff, okay? So we already mentioned at Aura Attack Golden Animation Speed, so let's not go over it too much. So this is what I like to use a lot. You will see it a lot in this course, in all of the bootcamps, which is like a timeline of Aura Attacks, right? So Aura Attack with animation of the Aura Attack and cooldown. By the way, without... Oh. I guess I already spoiled it, but I was going to ask, what do you think this white line represents here? But I already have the answer. If you're ranged, the line represents when the projectile comes out, okay? If you're a ranged champion. If you're a melee champion, the line represents when the moment, like, the damage is dealt, okay? And oh, attack speed is just this. This is what attack speed means. You just shrink the whole timeline, okay? So just look at this picture for a couple of seconds so you understand what I mean. See how both the animation and cooldown are getting shrinked. That's what getting attack speed means, okay? Is that clear? So it's really important when you get attack speed, you use the maximum amount of... You know, not only you maximize the, the amount of auto attacks that you throw out, but you also move sooner because your animation is sooner. So that means... Remember, what does this mean? If your animation is shorter, you can use more abilities or use the abilities or movement sooner after the auto attack, okay? So, I'm actually gonna get into practice tools so I can uh, show you this in real time while I explain what I'm doing. So let's pick a random champion here that we can show this. I guess Varus is a good choice for this. I know you can see I'm on my second monitor getting into the Varus practice tool. So I'm not going to get lethal tempo because I don't want to change my attack speed too much. So I'm going to get like tank runes on Varus so my attack speed remains the same. The guilty will know agony. Right. <clears throat> By the way, just in case you're wondering, the speed of the projectile flying through the air doesn't change with attack speed, only the animation. So if you're Varus, you get a lot of attack speed, it will change like the speed at which he moves the bow and throws the arrow. But the arrow speed itself is still the exact same. It doesn't change the arrow speed, okay? okay. So, just so that you see this, look at the speed at which my projectile will come out of my body here. Let's move this. Look at the speed at which the projectile comes out of the body and the speed of the animation. It takes quite a long time to, to like move the arrow up and down, right? See that? And see how after the projectile comes out, he's still moving the bow. The animation doesn't finish. It continues, see? Even after the pressure ball comes out. And it's quite slow, right? Like, look at how long I will stand still if I'm moving, like, side by side, and I hit it. Look at how long I will stand still. Right? Okay. But now, if I get attack speed, you may think that attack speed will only make my out attack speed, like, the, the cooldown between out attacks faster. So with one out attack only, there shouldn't be a difference. But there is. Because attack speed also increases your animation speed. If I get tons of attack speed, you will see how my uh get even more. You will see how my see how the auto attack comes out faster. Not only see that? How fast he moves the arrow now. I mean the bow. So you will see that I stand still for less time if I auto attack like that. Right? So you gotta use that wisely. Okay, so let's talk about uh the most important part now. This is something that you would understand if you want to auto-attack properly. And by the way, this is the easy, one of the easiest ways that you can tell if somebody's scripting is if they do this properly, but they play bad. Because doing this properly is quite advanced, but if you do that properly, but you, you're still kind of a bad player, then for sure you're scripting, right? So, remember the auto-attack thing that we had here, the animation? A lot of people know that if you move during the animation, you will cancel your auto attack, right? Everybody has heard like, oh, he canceled the auto attack. Like, let's sell the attack speed so it's lower. If if I start moving the bow and then I, I move myself, like click on the ground, the, the auto attack gets canceled, right? See? Never came out. Do you see that? See? He he like put the arrow on the bow, but it, the auto attack never came out, right? Okay. So that's what we call an auto attack cancel. Quite bad, right? So whenever you input any commands during the auto attack, it will cancel the auto attack. By the way, this doesn't happen only with with moving; it happens with abilities as well. If I use my E, like there are it cancelled, right? But 
See? Yeah, I also cancelled it with E and never came out. See? It never comes out. But again, I start out attacking but it never comes out. But this is only because I'm doing it wrong. There's such a thing as a good auto attack cancel, okay? So what I mean is, if you auto attack here, I mean, if you move here during the second half of the animation of the auto attack, then the auto attack will come out perfectly and you will cancel the animation, which is perfect because it means that usually you would use abilities or move here, right? During the cooldown. But what I'm saying is, you can actually start moving and using abilities here. Look at how much more distance and movement you will gain. So, I think I have a percentage, um, a slide for this actually. So you you must only stand still during the first part of the animation, okay? Only during the first. In the second half of the animation, when the projectile is already out, you can move all you want. Or if you're melee, when you did the damage. Cancelling the animation during the second part has no downsides. And you should always try to do it, okay? So, look at this. I have this, right? So, a bad out of the cancel is if you move here, right? And a good out of the cancel is if you move here. So, look at how this looks. Remember how I was cancelling the auto attack? Now, look at the difference. This is a player moving and auto attacking without cancelling the auto attack animation. This is without doing it. See, I'm waiting for the full animation, right? You see that, right? So now I will cancel the animation and move as soon as my projectile is out of my body, I will already move, right? Face and see how it stands still way less amount of time. In fact, it looks like my champion is barely standing still at all, right? So I'm doing the damage, the projectile is coming out, but I'm cancelling the auto attack animation. Which means I can move more, I can move sooner, and not only that, I can also use my ability sooner. So look at how I could, like, for example, right? Use my E right when the auto attack is coming out. So, for example, the same with Q, you can start casting the Q right when the auto attack is coming out. See? And I already casted it. Whereas if I wait for the full animation, that's without waiting, but if I wait for it, it's way slower, right? And then I start casting. So one of the other things that you should do to increase your damage output is just... Not only damage output, by the way, if you're running away from someone, look at this in real time. Let's say this is an enemy chasing me or the blue buff. Look at how much different it will be if I cancel my, my auto attack animation and if I don't, right? Because if I don't cancel it... Waiting for the full auto attack animation, right? It can hit me quite a lot, so I, because I moved less distance. Whereas if I cancel my auto attack animation... He can never touch me, see? See that? He can never touch me. Okay? Because I'm moving so much more. And similarly, if you're chasing someone, if I don't cancel my auto attack animation, they will leave my range, right? Because I'm standing still so long, see? Whereas if I cancel my auto attack animation, I would always stay on top of them, almost losing no speed at all. See? You see how I'm canceling it? I'm moving as soon as the pressure comes out, okay? So this is huge, okay? This is huge. This is like part of what in Valorant would be like aiming at the head, right? It's huge. It makes you do like 30% more damage, take 30% less damage because you just run faster, you move faster, you catch up to enemies more, you can use more abilities in between. Huge. Okay, so next. So this is what the difference would be, right? See? Not only move, by the way, this would also be like using abilities, not only moving. So, so far, any questions? Is this... Let me know if anyone didn't understand until here, any part. Okay, perfect. By the way, I think we have a chat. If somebody doesn't is shy and doesn't want to unmute and talk, I think we have some of that. So you can do that as well. Yeah, chat. Class 1 chat, yeah. If you have any questions you can also post them there okay so now let's get into what i call the inputs rules that i have had students come and tell me because i have i have explained these rules before and they have like a tiny guide that i sometimes send my students even before the sessions like they contact me and they ask me like is is there something i need to do to prepare for a session and i tell them yeah look just practice these mechanics and input things before the session and they after that, they send me a game going like, you know, 
13 and 0 and tell me, yeah, just with that, I, I'm like winning so much more. Because it's like telling, uh, again, I hate to make the meta metaphor too many times, but it's like telling a shooter player that didn't even know that they should aim at the head, that they should aim at the hand. The difference will be like night and day, right? Okay, so most people here know what an out attack reset is. So I want to know if somebody can explain uh, what an out attack reset is compared to an out attack cancel. What's the difference? Okay, perfect. So the first thing is that you need uh, resets are only possible with abilities. And the way you should see it is like, remember your, your timeline of auto attacks? If this is your usual timeline of auto attacks, a reset, what a reset does is just moves everything one step sooner. So this moves here, this moves here, okay? And therefore you can auto attack once more here. You get it? So you end up fitting almost one more auto attack in the same period of time. Um, so if you ask when you should reset your auto attack, you should reset your auto attack again in the second half of the animation. So then we're mixing both. We're doing an auto attack reset at the same time as we're doing an auto attack animation cancel. Really interesting, right? Like you could still reset here, by the way, but it's just worse because you gain less time. Remember, what the reset does is it will it will take this next auto attack and bring it here, like somewhere here. So the the more back we bring it, the better. So we want to bring this auto attack here if possible. It would be ideal, right? It's still okay if you bring it here, but it's not the best. And here is like the worst possible auto attack reset. Because if you reset here, it just means that you're bringing this auto attack a little bit sooner here. It's like barely an advantage, right? Um, okay. So this is what a reset looks like in the timeline, right? You just bring your auto attack one half of animation well, the timeline speaks for itself, maybe I'm making it too complicated if I explain it, but basically it's just fit four out attacks in where you could have hit three before. And the difference in time is just one half of animation. So it's really good. So examples of this, most people already know, so I'm not going to dwell into it, Toby, but examples are like, you know, Cyber W, by E, Nasus Q, Jax W. Most top laners have one, a lot of junglers have one, some ADCs have one. Riot is really careful to give ADCs auto attack resets before because they are really powerful when you have actually, you know, a lot of crit. So, you know, Sivir has one, Ash has one, Vayne has one, but it's not very strong. Lucian has one. Okay. Um, by the way, about animations, animations don't have what we call a bad cancel that auto attacks have. Oh, almost got it. So you know how with auto attacks I can cancel my auto attack and, and it doesn't come out? Right? Like that? Like that? There's no such thing with animations intentionally by yourself in, in abilities. Like, other people can cancel your abilities, but you cannot cancel your own abilities. Like, you can without it, like that, see? I mean, you can do it, but you cannot screw your own abilities. Like, there are no bad ways of cancelling your own abilities. Like, look at it. If I throw my E, no matter how much I try to click on the ground, it will never cancel. Okay? See? Varus will always wait until the E comes out to then start moving. No matter how much I spam my click on the ground, look at this, see? It will only come out. Whereas with my auto attack, it doesn't come out, see? Why is this? Because Riot has something called priority. So ability animations have the highest priority. So they have priority over walking. That means that if you use an animation like E and then walk, the E has more priority, so you will always wait for the E to come out, okay? And by the way, this is good because it also ignores enemy CC. You can use most abilities in the game. Look at this. See how when I throw my E, there will appear... Look at this... Um, look at this section in the screen, how there's a bar that appears. See that? That's the channel time, right? During that channel time, you're immune to CC, basically. I mean, not immune, you, you're gonna get stunned by... Like, the ability is not going to get cancelled due to CC. Unless the ability has a channel time like Q. So, Varus Q, if I do this, then yeah. They can cancel it with CC. Like, Vi Q as well. Or, you know, Nunu Ultimate, whatever. But most abilities cannot be cancelled by CC. So, that means that when you're about to get hit by a stun, you should cast your ability 
to remove the stun or, or at least to ignore the stun and still be able to cast an ability so like for example I will get pushed by the dragon and you will see how the E still comes out even when I'm getting pushed see he can't cancel it no matter what so this is a really good tip when you're playing for example against Seraphine this way I love the Seraphine Kai'Sa matchup when the Seraphine ult is hitting you you just cast the Kai'Sa W or the Ezreal ult and it will not uh, like like um, stop your ability from coming out. Let's see that once again. See, it's not possible to cancel. Okay. So this means that abilities in league can only be most abilities in league. So for example, for Virus E, the visual animation of E matches the channel time. So like, there's no point in trying to cancel it. This is why Riven, you should try to cancel with Riven, because Riven, her animations have different visual speeds than channel in time. But with most champions, you know, there's not a lot of point in trying to do that, because they are the same, so, you know. By the way, fun fact here, look at when I flash, there's no bar that appears in the bottom. You know what that means? Flash has no animation. So you know what that means? That you can flash during another animation. See? Okay. Or even with, when you're out attacking. See? The attack will still come off. Because Flash is an ability without channel time. So that means that you can mix it with other animations without any drawbacks whatsoever. See? Okay. Um, next. I want to go over what I call the four fundamental rules of ADC. And I'm going to... or no, Not of ADC, of, of auto attacking in general. This applies to every role, not just ADC. And I want to go over how you practice them. And this is going to be actually the part that will actually improve your games a lot. So there's two options. We can either do the break after or before. No, I will I will actually give you the four rules. And then we will do the break after the rules. And we will practice how to, you know, practice these rules in practice tool and with practice drills. So let me see if, yeah, smart rules. Okay. I said there are four. I can't even lie. There are more than four. But they actually are four fundamental ones and they all come from there. So, you know, for example, if a math teacher tells you that in math there only exists, you know, uh, sum and subtraction and multiplication, whatever, it's not really true, but, you know, every other operation comes from those. So this is the same thing, kind of. Um, so let's begin. Oh, I wish I had them, like, one by one. So try to not spoil yourselves. Let's go one by one. This is the most important one. That is why it's the first one, okay? One out attack input per each out attack. What do I mean by out attack input, by the way? Who can tell me the ways you can out attack? The, the two or three main inputs that we have to out attack. Right, right. Right, but what, what is that input? It's right click, right? Right, so we have right click. Then you have attack move. Yeah, and then we have one more. <clears throat> so we have attack move. Um, let me move this to here. So we have attack move. My purpose is clear. We have the, the right click. We have attack move. And we have attack move click. So attack move click is the one that shows you the range here, okay? That's attack move click. So by default, I, I actually don't know what the default ones are because they changed a couple of years ago, but they should be. Um, attack move should be like A, and this one by default is X, I think. And this one is just right click. What key you should use? A lot of students ask me, like, what key should I use for each one? doesn't really matter, you know? It's whatever you're comfortable with. As long as it doesn't handicap you, Personally, what I use, if you want to hear my opinion, what I personally have is I have attack move on uh, mouse button 4, which is my thumb. Mouse button 4 is the, the thumb with which you return to a previous page in the browser. You know that, that click in the mouse, the thumb? That's mouse button, four, mouse button 4. And this is A for me. Plus left click. And this is just mouse button 2, so right click. So right click is just the normal one. Then you have mouse button 4 for me, which is attack move. So attack move. If you have this option on, which you always should, use move attack move on cursor. 
what it does is it will auto attack the thing closer to your cursor, right? Even if you miss. So one thing that I should ex that I should advise is that just because you're a lot of students that I have are lazy, and what they do is when they are using attack move, they don't aim on the person. Attack move is not designed to do this, guys, and don't worry about aiming at all. Attack move is designed to aim on the on the target, but even if you accidentally miss, like that, like I don't know, I missed like that, it will still hit him. That's the point of attack move. The point of attack move is not overusing it and you know just spamming the click on the ground like that. The point of attack move is still trying to aim on the guy, but if you miss, it's no big deal. You will still hit him. See, that's the point of attack move. So just because you're using attack move doesn't mean that you shouldn't like try to actually aim on people. Okay. By the way, you should have this option on because if it's off, it will just hit whatever is closer to you, no matter where you click. So even if I click here, who's closer? This guy. So see. It's really bad. I can't aim anymore. Okay. It's really bad because have you ever seen how people are kiting someone running away and kiting like this, right? Like kiting back. And this guy puts a word on the ground and now I hit the word. That's because I'm using attack move like this. Look at what happens. I'm kiting him doing this. And now he puts a word here. And now look. See? Because I'm using that. So that's really bad. <clears throat> Okay, and then attack move click is the one that is popular nowadays. And this is recommended. Okay, so what is this? If you watch any challenger pro ADC streams nowadays, Gumayushi, Ruler, Viper, even Double Lift in NA, or Hansama in Europe, or even Reckless, you will see that 99% of them are spamming this nowadays. It's the new meta. Which is, uh, by default it's X, I have it on A. So it's, if you go to settings, uh, 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 uh. Their attack move. Actually, I have them mixed by the way. Attack move click is the I mixed the names, but it's it's the same. Attack move click is the one that I showed, and the attack move is this one. It's whatever, it's the same. Um, so it's either A or X. By default, it's X. I have it on A. And what it does is it will it won't do anything when you press the key. It will just show you the range of your out attack. And then. If you move with right click, it won't do anything. You just move, see? It doesn't do anything. But if you left click, it will do the exact same thing that attack move was doing before. So you first look at the range and then you left click and it will hit whatever is close to around and where you clicked. So it's like the it's the same as the previous one, but with with extra steps. So why do we even need that, you might ask? Well, because Especially in laning phase, or in teamfights in which you don't have a lot of attack speed yet, it's really good because it's a really good tool to be precise and methodical and like pixel perfect. So think about it. What do we want in the lane? We don't want to be as fast as possible, right? Because I don't have enough attack speed anyway. Your level three is zero attack speed, zero cooldowns. So well, what you want to be is actually really per pixel perfect and methodical with how you actually um, space the guy hit from the max range and this is where we go back to the beginning of the session remember I mentioned range you should always use the max well if you A click like I'm doing or X click whatever you have My purpose is notice how I can measure the pixel perfect range and actually hit this guy from the very border of his hitbox see and I can perfectly space him like that and then go back in a perfect manner like there are see pixel perfect spacing and I go back because I'm checking the range a lot. And the other thing that it allows me is it increases my APM and I'm spamming A a lot. See how I'm spamming A even when I'm just moving without auto attacking? I'm just spamming it to check my range. To know when I'm actually going to be in range of auto space in this guy. And then go back out. So if you ever watch any kind of pro play ADCs nowadays, all you hear in the cure is clack 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 clack. Like the A a lot. Watch double lift. Watch... Gumayushi, everyone's doing this now. It has so many benefits. So spam your... By the way, not only ADC, mid laners do it too. Um, everybody is, tr is starting to do this now. It just has... I cannot get into how many benefits it has this session. But it has just too many benefits. I do what I will say though, there's a bug in League of Legends. Even experienced players don't know about this bug. Remember how I told you that you can auto-attack players from the border of their hitbox? There's a bug in League. 
if you don't use the A click and, and click like this, your champion actually hits from inside the hitbox. So you lose range. Look at this. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna right click him. You might think that my champion will stop at the edge of the hitbox and then, you know, hit at the max range, right? Well, let's see. I didn't. Look at how close I went. So let's mark this. And let's see where I could have auto attacked with a click instead. No forgiveness. Okay, I'm gonna do it really pixel perfect to illustrate how much more. There. See? Look at how, my ra how much range I lost just because of right clicking instead of using the A to check the range and then click. And this, sometimes it's worse, sometimes you lose this much. But this is like, you know, 30, 40, 50 range, it's a good chunk of range, right? It's not, it's not just a nuisance, it's actually really, really huge for spacing, etc. Like, look at my range as far as 575. How much range does Vayne have? 550, only 25 less than me. That means that if I hit Vayne right clicking and she hits me with A click, there's actually no difference in range. It's insane, right? So you gotta do it. This especially matters for a champion like if you're playing mid lane, like, I don't know, poking. Let's say that you are something like a Syndra or Orianna poking the enemy mid lane without attacks. It matters a lot because each one of your auto attacks counts a lot. Okay. So let's go to the rules. The first rule is gonna be only one click on the enemy per each auto attack. Okay. One input per each auto attack. So I don't care if you're using any of the three inputs. So, um, you know, the right click, the attack move, or the attack move click. I don't care which one you're using. All I care about is that you use only one time for each auto attack. That means that from now on, you're never allowed to do this. Face That's wrong. Oblivion. I click twice, not allowed, period. Okay, ever. So from now on, you're only allowed to hit once on the enemy, but many times on the ground. So look look at this and you will understand. <clears throat> if you go back to the timeline thing, think about it. Here. So just look at the bottom one, right? This one. Think about it. What happens to my movement if I'm clicking on the enemy many times? If I keep click, clicking on the enemy here, click, 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 many clicks on the enemy or inputs on the enemy, what happens? Can, can anyone tell me? Well, what happens is, what happens, so if you're still clicking on the enemy during this time, what happens is that you never move. Remember what I said earlier, when you click on an enemy, you don't move. If you keep clicking on the enemy here, your out attack is still on cooldown, so it won't come out. Think about it, guys. Let's say that my E is on cooldown. I use my E, and now I'm spamming my E. Right now I'm spamming my E. It's not coming out. Out attacks have a cooldown too. It doesn't matter how many times you click on the enemy, it won't come out faster, okay? It won't. Like, look at this. I'm gonna out attack three times. One, two, three. Look at the DPS, 78. I'm gonna out attack three times again. But this time, spamming my right click on the enemy. No One, two, three. 78. It didn't do any difference. So it's, it's super bad, right? Because I'm spamming my click on the enemy, which means that I'm not, I'm not using my click elsewhere. And it's not gaining any advantage for me because, like, it's not going to do any more damage just because you're clicking on him, okay? You saw how I get 78 spamming, and if I do this, I'm gonna look at another place, go chill, go drink something. 78, see? It doesn't change anything. Okay, so the point being that we gotta use the time during the cooldown of the auto attack, we gotta be smart and use it to move. So we wanna move here, and the only way to move is clicking on the ground, right? So the rule here is simple a low elo player. will click on the um, target a lot and will click on the ground very little. A high elo player, a good player, a pro player will click on the target only once 
and we'll click on the ground a lot okay and it makes a night and day difference this is like the aiming at the head part so i'm gonna show you i'm gonna do the low willow thing the low willow thing i'm gonna click on the dummy a lot and i'm gonna click on the ground very little and you tell me if it looks Ailo and which one will look better now. See, I'm clicking on the dummy a lot. Clicking on the ground very little. Okay, only once. Notice how I'm not even cancelling my auto attack animation because I'm not clicking on the ground. Now I'm going to click on the target only once and I'm going to click on the ground a lot. And you tell me which one looks better. Right? This already looks like I'm higher, 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 higher elo, right? It already looks like I have more control of, over my champion. I can do whatever I want during the auto attack cooldown. I can move more. I am canceling my auto attack animation, so that means I'm gonna do more damage, right? Again, let's compare it. Compare that to right. You see the difference, it's night and day. It might not look like it's night and day when I'm hitting the dummy, but in a real game, this is the difference between getting kills and not getting the kills, okay? Makes a whole world of a difference. So the rule is, thankfully the rule is pretty simple. It's just, from now on, the rule is gonna be only one out attack input per each out attack. So I don't care if you use right click, attack move or whatever you use, only do it once in each out attack. And then many times on the ground in between. Okay? Any questions about this rule? Okay. By the way, I haven't checked the channel if anyone said anything. I think somebody said any something. I guess the best example will be Leona Q to auto attack to destroy war faster. Yeah, that's a really good example. Um, Of auto attack reset, yeah. So, uh, rule number two. The auto attack input that we mentioned earlier, remember how I said you only do it once? Okay. Because you're only going to do it once, you got to make sure that you do it in the right moment, right? That's the issue, because if you have your auto attacks here, remember what we want to do between the auto attacks, right? We want to click on the... We want to use the ground, and we want to use abilities, right? When like move and cast spells, that simple. So that means that our auto attack input has to be one only and it has to be here perfectly timed, right? Only one. Because what happens is, let's make a test here. Who can tell me what happens if I use my auto attack input too late? Instead of using it here, I use it like here. What's gonna happen? As in, my auto attack was ready, available for use, but I clicked later. Right. Well, because my, it's, it's way simpler than that. My auto attack will come out later, which means I lose DPS. It's that simple. You're gonna do less damage. Okay? You... Remember, guys, if you click later, you effectively have less attack speed, don't you? Clicking later is equivalent to having less attack speed. That's all there is to it. Like, think about it. Remember the 78? Okay. So now, look at what happens to the DPS if I do the same, but clicking too late. I'm going to do the rules perfectly, but I'm going to click too late on the dummy. Look at the DPS. 210 total, both, but DPS way lower. It's that simple. You click later, you lose DPS. Why? Because you're losing attack speed. So this is why if you have little tempo or you buy attack speed, it means absolutely nothing unless you're clicking as soon as you can, as soon as the auto attack is actually available. The game will throw you these the auto attacks to be ready, but you're the one that has to use them as, as soon as they come. It's the same as cooldown, guys. Look at the cooldown of my... Or or let's make a better example. Like, the cooldown on my Q is 16 seconds, right? If I buy a lot of ability haste... So, let's see... Uh, where's the... Where's the ability haste? Here. 
So let's say I have a lot of ability haste, right? Now instead of 16, it is 8. But guess what? If I throw my next Q at 16 seconds after the first one, it is the same as never buying the haste in the first place, right? The same happens with attack speed. If I increase my attack speed with like lethal tempo or like, you know, any kind of attack speed items, but then I'm clicking late, then it's the same as never buying the attack speed. You're losing damage. Click late. It's that simple, okay? Click late. Lose damage. Okay. What happens if I click too early? Like, my auto attack is ready here and I click too late. I'm going to lose damage. I click here, it's going to be perfect. But what happens if I click too early? What am I going to lose? Right, so you're going to lose distance because you're going to stand still. Now let's look at the same example. This time I'm going to get 78 as again, which is, by the way, 78 is the maximum, remember? Because oh, even if you do this, it doesn't matter. 78, right? This time... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click too early on the dummy and you will see that my champion, remember how I look like this? Look at this. There my champion is like not standing still at all, right? Look at what happens if I click too early. Face oblivion. Sure, my DPS is still going at, like to be almost 78, like I don't lose any DPS, right? I'm not losing DPS, but what am I losing? I'm not moving, because I click so early, I send the command to the game that I want to attack here, so the game goes like, it's not ready. So I'm going to make you stand still until the auto attack is ready. So you got to play both these rules. One auto attack per each, sorry, one input per each auto attack, but also the input has to be perfectly timed. If you input on the target too early, you lose distance. If you input on a target too late, you lose damage. Both are wrong. Kiting and, and auto attacking is about maximizing your damage while maximizing your distance. That's the whole point. Otherwise, we, we will just like spam the clicks. There's a reason I'm not saying that you should just spam the right click on the guy and stand still, right? Because that's all fine and good if the guy is this dummy and doesn't move. Sure, I'm doing 78. But I promise you that if I'm doing this and the guy is moving, I'm not going to do a max damage. You can see it here. If I do this, now he gets out of my range. See? And I lose DPS because I got to chase him. Whereas if I was doing the proper thing, like I attacking only once, and then clicking on the ground and canceling my animation, he never leaves my range. So effectively, I am getting more damage on him. See? I did this test. If you do this with a Scuttlecrab that has less speed than you, by the way, I did this test. I got 19 seconds to kill the scuttle crab if I'm spamming my right click on him, and I got 12 seconds to kill the scuttle crab if I am actually moving and canceling the auto attack animation. So I'm gaining around 40% damage just by clicking correctly. This is the equivalent of having like a full new item. It's so important. It's again like headshotting in a shooter FPS game. And this is a scuttle crab that moves slow, by the way. If it was a champion with more speed, the difference would be even higher. So I think we can do a small 5 minute break before we do the next half an hour or so in which we're going to finish this and practice the auto attack drill. What do you think guys? So I have time to get water and you guys have time to get coffee. <laughs> the, the way it works is like the guy, the guy who speaks has to get water and the guy who listens has to get coffee. <laughs> Pro tip. So the guy who listens doesn't fall asleep. And the guy who speaks doesn't get a sore throat. So, see you again in uh, four minutes.
All right. Just wait one more minute. Back. By the way, for this last section, I recommend that people who have two monitors pull up my stream on the second monitor and go to the practice tool on their first monitor with their champion of choice. Just make sure that he has auto attacks and that the auto attacks don't change over time. Like, you know, Jinx Q changes the auto attacks over time or tracks passive. So take something that is, you know, steady and normal and consistent. And just get like tank runes like I have. Like, I have Guardian personally. Just to not change your. Oh, he kicked me out. But I have Guardian because it doesn't change your DPS. Because a lot of the drill involves measuring your DPS. In the future, you can take Lethal Tempo if you want. But also not everyone here is ADC and this drill is supposed to be for everyone, not just ADCs. A lot of people think that our attacks don't matter for anyone else, but they matter a lot. Okay, so everybody back. Did we get any coffees or no coffees? Okay. No, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, so basically, um, before that mattered more, but I don't know if you noticed that I think it was four or five patches ago, Riot changed Misfortune Q animation speed to scale with your attack speed. So basically, now it's just like one out attack more. It's like because before. In level 1, Misfortune Q was the same speed as our attack. But as you got higher level and attack speed, your attacks were faster, but the Q stayed the same. So you had to think about how to use it. But now, the Q goes up the animation with attack speed. So basically, you just use it like a normal auto attack reset, like auto Q auto uh, always. It's just because they changed the way it works, you know. We need to share screen? Not necessary, unless you have a question about how you're doing the drill, and I can correct you. Like, if you are doing the drill and not, not figuring out how to do it properly, then yeah. But just pull up the practice tool, okay? Um, I'm gonna tell you the last two ones, and then we're gonna start with the drill. So the last two ones is gonna be, the first one is, never use an ability or auto attack input as a means of movement. So what do I mean by this? Let me go to practice tool again, because I closed. Let's do it with other champion that is not Varus. So this is a test account I got for this Vulcan processor, so it doesn't have the most highest amount of champions. So anyone here can tell me a champion that they want to see out of these. Not Shax, because he changes attack speed. Maybe somebody here has a main that is here. Okay. Caitlyn at Twitch. Mm, I don't have Twitch. No, I don't have Twitch. So, Caitlyn it is. I'm on the case. Caitlyn from Arcane. So, this is a huge rule. Of, okay, every time I expected someone... Does anyone here have trouble playing against Syra, Morgana, Blitzcrank, like any kind of uh, long-range hook or CC in, in bot lane? Or even in the mid lane, like, uh, you know, Serath or, you know, Orianna? Syndra, does anyone have trouble against that? My duty is to protect the citizens of Piltover. Syra, okay, perfect. Through. Okay, so the reason you guys have problems with Syra, by the way, Syra win rate is way higher in low elo than high elo. In high elo, nobody plays her and nobody wins with her. I'm gonna tell you why, it's really easy. A low elo player breaks this rule. Never use an ability or out attack input as a means of movement. What does this room mean? This if Sarah is here, with you bars. let me ask you something. If I want to move here, and I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm using my auto attack on Sarah as a means of moving towards Sarah. Because I'm not auto attacking here, I can't auto attack from here. So if I click here, I'm just going to move. No and then Caitlyn is going to auto attack only when she reaches there. Instead, what if we do this? And then we auto attack on space. Right? So, can anyone tell me why this is better? And the hint here is, imagine this is Syrah, and there are a bunch of minions here. Like, 
Let's wait for a minion wave to spawn, actually, so you have a clear presentation. So there are a bunch of minions, and this is Sarah. And you do this, so waste this pad. To poke her from out of her range, like that. Why would that be bad? And instead what I'm doing, what I'm sh you should do is like this, right? The law like, you know, measure the range. In and out, whatever. And then you order that and go, right? So waste that. Mm. If you don't have the answer, I see why you're struggling in Sarah. So the reason is, you walk in a straight line to Sarah. It's impossible to dodge her route, okay? You're walking a straight line to her. You get hit by a root. 100%. As a player, if you if you are actually playing Sarah or Morgana yourself, the best thing you can do is, imagine I'm Morgana or Sarah. I slowly get into the enemy out attack range, and right before the enemy out attack range, I walk out and pull his aggro. By pulling his aggro, he starts walking in, in a straight line to me because he clicked on me, and then I throw the spell. Hits 100% of the time. So... Anytime you're playing against a champion with skill shots, the worst thing you can do is hit them from out of range. Because your champion moves in a straight line to them and it's impossible to dodge anything, okay? Impossible. With the other thing that, remember what I told you before, that if you actually click on people from out of range, you're actually losing range. Remember that? See? Instead I could have clicked from here. It's only if I walk and then click. But if you, like, if you walk and then click, you don't lose any range, right? I'll make this quick. But if you click, you lose range. See? See, that is insane. Look at that range that he lost. What? So, the way you fix this, guys, is by never clicking on somebody who is out of range. There are even more reasons to this. Any junglers here? Does anyone play jungle in the this chat? Of Piltover is its people. I wonder if we have junglers for the first session. So for junglers, this is, I think, the role for for which this rule matters the most is, jung is jungle. Because if you're ganking someone in the jungle, what happens if I click here? I walk in a straight line to him, and his path is going to be something like this, right? He's going to be walking like that to the tower. If I click here, by the time, imagine that I'm a melee champion, right? By the time I get to him, by the time I get here, he will already move here. Right? So let's let's make a diagram. I click on him. By the time I get in, in this range, imagine I'm melee, like I'm ganking with a jungler, right? By the time I'm here, he already moved. Okay, so I move again in a straight line to him. By the time I get here, he's already moved. Okay, I get in a straight line to here. By the time I get here, he already moved. Okay, I get in a straight line to here. And notice how my final movement is actually a freaking curve. Now everybody knows that a curve is not the fastest point between the fastest like uh, I guess path between two points, right? I don't want any physics people here tell me oh, that is only in a non-Euclidean plane blah blah blah. Hey, whatever. So what would have been the smartest thing to do? Just click on the ground and your movement is like this. And again, if there's any math nerds here. Pythagoras, if you do the two sides of a triangle, it's slower or longer than doing the hypotenuse, right? Any math nerds. So, just click on the ground and you're gonna cut their way off if you're jungling, right? Gotta get ahead of them. When I coach a jungler below diamond, this is the number one mistake they do, by the way. They always... In fact, fun fact, do you know the, the YouTube channel Skill Capped? I think they stole this from me because I did like a small bootcamp for a couple people showing this in a server. This exact pathing thing, and like one week later, but um, uh, Skillcat posted it in in their channel, like the exact same explanation and diagram that I had. So it was kind of sus, but basically it it matters a lot. Okay, never click on somebody out of range. Instead, just click on the ground until you're actually in range. So we have two rules for the auto attack input now, which is not only you're gonna only auto attack when your auto attack is off cooldown, because remember what I said about the timing. If you click here, auto attack is not ready. If you click here, the auto attack is not ready. So not only you click when the auto attack is ready, but you also only click when the auto attack is in range. Okay? In other words, you should only input auto attacks when you actually have an intention to auto attack. Here, I don't have any intention to auto attack. I have an intention to move. So why don't you click the ground when you move? Use the ground to move. Okay? And last rule, for now, is... 
clicking as close to your champion when as you can. This is literally the most important thing ever when you want to learn mechanics. So can anyone tell me why? There are like three or four reasons. Probably you have heard of this, but I'm curious if you know why. So uh, the, um, the, the rule I'm saying is that you should click as close to your character. When you click on the ground, a, a low elo player will do this. Click many times in the same place and really far away from the champion. A high elo player will click as close to a champion as you can and in never like this, like, you know. Okay. Okay, that's number one. So why is it easier? Perfect, yeah. So the distance from here to here is more than here to here. So simple, simple stuff, right? Like the mouse moves less, therefore faster, right? Because remember, from the point of view of League, the champion will move exactly in the same way if you click here or if you click here, right? I will not move faster just because I'm moving faster further away, right? Like, look, it doesn't change anything at all, right? Let's do this again. It doesn't change anything, right? So, mo clicking further away doesn't change how fast or anything you move. It just makes it harder because you take longer. There's another reason. Imagine you want to dodge something that comes here. Morgana's here, throws the spell. Okay, for the Syrah haters. Sarah is here, and no reason you hate playing against Sarah. Sarah throws a spell, throws the the root, the E, right? Um, how do you dodge the E? The E has like a hitbox. How do you dodge it? By getting out of the hitbox, right? So what's the best way to get out of the hitbox? It's by a 90 degree uh, angle, right? The shortest path out of the hitbox is a 90 degree angle. Either here or here. So far so good, right? Like, imagine if you're doing this path, it's slower to get out of the hitbox, right? Look at what happens if I'm clicking far away from my champion. I'm clicking here. Now, if I want to dodge the incoming Syra binding, and I click here, look at the angle that I ended up turning. A really, really narrow angle. Like, you know, 20 degrees or something. So that means that if you're clicking really far away from your champion, you're actually going to have a harder time dodging, not only because of the reaction time that our friend here mentioned, but also because your angle of movement is going to be way more... Do we say narrow in English when it's like... I guess that's narrow, right? We call it narrow. I guess... Or close, I don't know. Whatever you prefer. So, essentially, the closer you click to your champion, the more of an angle you'll do faster, which is really good, because if I'm clicking here and then I click here, it's an integrity angle. You dodge way, way more. Um, I'm going to tell you a secret, guys. I got banned for scripting twice this year because people reported me every game because I dodged too many things. I have proof in my server, like, I have the screenshots, like, uh, people report me for scripting constantly, even in my stream, you can see it. Last time I streamed, I had to add one of the players in my team and share my Discord screen so that he didn't report me for scripting. It's because doing this is too broken, like, clicking close to your champion, and many times, back and forth, and you can just turn the, the 90 degrees so easily, and you dodge everything, okay? Just keep the cursor really close. The last thing is that keeping the clo cursor close will actually increase your APM. So if you click really far away, because your mouse travels more distance, notice how I, it actually means that my clicks are less uh, APM, less actions per minute, right? I'm doing less amount of clicks because I have to travel so much. Whereas if I click really close, look at how many more times I can click, right? Because I have to travel way less distance, that means that I can click more times. That's really good. Because more APM means less reaction time. Okay. And as a last thing, if you click far away from your champion, any FPS shooters or also players will know this. The farther away you click, the less precise you're going to be. If you got a flick from here to here, the chances of you missing the auto attack or clicking in the wrong place or hitting a word accidentally are higher. Whereas if I'm clicking really close, the chances of misclicking is way lower. Just try it yourselves. Do this. Put two words. You can do this exercise. Put two words really far away from each other. And as fast as you can, try to click back and forth on them and see if you're actually clicking exactly in the bottom of the world really fast and see you're gonna overshoot undershoot it's really bad right you're, you're missing you're not gonna land perfectly 
Now do the same exercise, but like here, and you will see how you hit in the middle most of the time, right? See? Or at least you're way more precise in where you hit. This is because the longer you gotta move, the, the more imprecise, okay? Any questions here? Let's start with the fun stuff. So, now we're gonna start with the practice drills. Um, I wanna know if anyone has questions before we start with that. Where is the channel? If anyone is typing, give me one second that I lost the channel among so many servers. Here it is, perfect. Okay. So I assume no questions, so let's start with the drill. I'll have this finished before so this drill, I created it myself, I teach it to almost every student that I have, and it's a lot of success. You can do it 10 minutes or 15 minutes per day before your first match of the day as like a practice thing, as a warm-up. It's really good as a warm-up. You know when you woke up, having your coffee, it's like, oh, first game of the day, I'm gonna end. Well, do this first. FPS players do it, they go to aim labs before Valorant. In also we have warm-up maps, so why don't we do it in League? In, in Smash, if you ever watch a Smash tournament, they have like half an hour where they're just practicing the combos and stuff before they play. So let's do the same in League, shall we? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to do a drill where you apply the four first rules here perfectly. And the drill has many levels because at first you're gonna do it very slowly with like level 3, no attack speed items, only boots. But then, as you get more, more and more comfortable with it over the course of days, you can, you know, start buying attack speed, you can get your level up, you can get lethal tempo, and keep doing the same drill. The first step in the drill is gonna be put a dummy, and you're gonna just right click it. Literally right click it once, and let your champion out attack until you reach like a thousand damage or so. So for Caitlyn, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna start the drill with the headshot every time, so the damage is always the same. So I charge my headshot, and now I'm gonna start. Usually, this is only because I chose Caitlyn, right? So let's start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until a thousand damage. So why am I doing this? I'm basically measuring how much damage I can do at most. And a thousand. So that means that my top DPS at a thousand total damage, when I did a thousand total damage, let me get some volume here. I don't have sound. There we go. At a thousand total damage, my maximum DPS is 66. You understand why, guys? Someone like, let me charge the, the headshot again. It doesn't matter how many times I click on the dummy. We don't hear you. I, I think your microphone is connected again. Thank you. Alright, no problem. So as you can see, even when I was right-clicking on the dummy, the damage was still 66 DPS at 1000, right? So what we did here is the step that we call, first of all, we measure, okay? Well, I told you my handwriting is not the best. So every time you go to do this drill, you gotta measure it first, because you gotta know how much damage you're doing with your current setup, you know, current runes, items, the champion that you chose, item uh, levels, uh, whatever. So for me, the maximum DPS that I can do, I can give my computer to Faker, he's not gonna do more than 66 DPS at a thousand. It's impossible, right? Like, I'm just, it's a limit of my attack speed. So, so far so good, right? So what's the drill here? Well, the drill is gonna be... Getting the 66 at a thousand again, but applying all of the rules I gave you before. So rule number one, only one click on the dummy and as many clicks on the ground as you can. So you're going to be moving constantly. You're going to maximize your distance. You cannot stand still. So. Stand. Oh my god, my handwriting is diabolical. Stand still is forbidden. You gotta move. In fact, if you were paying attention, what is the only moment in which I will stand still? The only moment. Who can tell me? There's only one brief period in which I will have to stand still no matter what. Channeling. 
Right, in the first half, in the first half of the animation of the auto attack. Remember how the auto attack had two animations? Two, well, two halves of the same animation. This was the projectile coming out. This is like the projectile. This, you gotta stand still. Here, you can move, right? So I'm gonna stand still only before the projectile comes out. When, and, the, and this is where I click on the target. So essentially what I'm saying here is between your right click and the projectile coming out, that's the only point in which you're allowed to stand still. Okay. So, okay, I gotta get 66 DPS, uh, only hitting once and many times on the ground. So rule number one was that, right? Like only one click on the dummy, many clicks on the ground. Second rule was that um, the click has to be perfectly timed. Because remember, what happens if I click too early? And who can tell me if I click too early before my order is ready? I think I told you this already. Yeah, I did. So if you click too early, you're gonna lose distance. Okay, you're gonna stand still, remember? If I do this, I'm clicking too early. See how I'm not moving, right? See how long I'm not moving? That's because I'm clicking too early. Okay. And if you click too late, if you ever click too late, I promise you that the DPS at a thousand damage will be lower than 66. Okay. And then the other rule that you will have to apply is moving back and forth a lot. So I don't want to see anyone doing this, like clicking really far away, clicking in the same point. I don't want to see anyone doing this, like, you know, I don't want to see this. Because you're not even clicking at that point and you're moving in the same lane. I want to see a lot of this, right? Okay, and I don't want to see any of um, clicking around. A lot of students do like click around the target dummy like this. That's also really bad. And ideally, I don't want you to click back and forth either. Like, I don't want to see this. Usually with ADC, you want to kite side by side. Because if you kite side by side, you keep the max range, see? Whereas if you kite in and out, you break the range rule. Sometimes you want to do this when spacing, but that's not what we're practicing here. Let's do this by the book. So let's try the drill one time and see how it looks like. So I gotta get 66 at a thousand. While clicking on the ground a lot. Back and forth, then I would attack perfectly. So just pay attention this time. Okay, like that. So now, I want to know if anybody has questions and you gotta start doing it. Um, I'm gonna do it one time fully. Let me stack the lethal, sorry, the headshot. And after I do it fully, you can start doing it now. If anyone has questions, you can see me doing it fully. <clears throat> and see how I'm canceling the other attack animation as well, right? Okay, so 66 at a thousand, even though I'm moving a lot, even though I'm cancelling the auto attack animation, even though I'm not getting hit by enemies, keeping my cursor close. So essentially I'm applying all the rules, moving a lot and moving the most amount of distance that I can, but in spite of that, I'm not losing any damage. This is what being a true good mechanical player in League means. It means being able to use the most damage output that you can, despite not losing, not losing any of the distance. So who here wants to be a test, uh, a, a guinea pig, and uh, share the screen and test it? Let's see if anyone is courageous enough. <laughs> and by the way, about the rest of the rules, they are not as important as the first four. Mm -hmm. As you can see, for you the DPS might be different because you're using a different champion, so always measure first, okay? While you're doing the DPS drill, I'm gonna show you how it looks like if you break the rules. So I wanna show you how it looks like if I, for example, click too early. So I'm gonna do the drill again until a thousand, but this time I'm gonna click too early on the dummy. I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> do you think Draven would be a good champion to start moving and attacking at the same time? Uh... Well, I mean, any champion can do it, yeah. Uh, the thing with Draven is that you also gotta pick up the access, right? So, let's keep doing this drill while I'll 
pick up the doorbell that just rang. Just do this drill for one or two minutes and I'll be just right back. All right, so who has done the drill? What are your results? <clears throat> I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Do you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. Uh, I need to teleport. Okay. Wait, wait. Practice tool pro tip. Shift and S will teleport. Shift and B places stamina. Okay. 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 You can share your screen if you want. Uh, how do you reset the dummy? How do you what? I like this. Okay. Well, you have Halo Blades, so your DPS measurement will be all over the place, right? That's wrong. Yeah. Wait, what? Well, you can do the drill with, with Halo Blades. Remember I said that we gotta get, like, Guardian? Oh, wait, it doesn't... Wait, it, do, it does proc to on dummies? Yes. They are champions. Uh, I fucked up then. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can like the more advanced version of the drill involves getting like that type of thing, right? But not yet. <clears throat> All right, I didn't know that. So while while he undoes the hail of blades, I'm gonna show you guys something. Um, the heart of Piltover there's another Piltover. part of this drill if you wanna get really good at, like, hitting the dummies or the champions, like not misclicking, right? Not hitting minions or wards accidentally. You can do the same drill, but place the dummy here. And now you gotta practice, like you know, move back and forth a lot, and you gotta practice hitting the dummy without hitting any of the raptors. Okay. <clears throat> so that's really good for practicing the aim. So whoever, we already passed the hour and a half, that was the first introduction session. So whoever has any questions, they can ask me now. And whoever needs to leave, you can do it, of course. And I want you to keep doing the practice drill once per day or so, at the beginning of the day. And as you get comfortable with it, you can increase the attack speed. But so you can do it with like, you know, level 18, our attack speed items. But the thing is... I want you to first make sure that you get the perfect DPS without standing still. Only when you get that comfortably every time, like I did, then you can ramp up the attack speed, okay? I much prefer this to <clears throat> duty. I'm gonna stay five more minutes for anyone else who has questions and our friend here who was gonna do the Caitlyn one. <clears throat> Sorry, 
you suggest for new players to have a course on 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 i mean in in the game or... in the game tab in the game tab yeah uh attack move on cursor on auto attack on use movement prediction off always off so you must uh also select auto attack on yes the reason why auto attack is a really good thing to have on is because in league of legends one of the fundamentals of league and almost almost every game uh, shooters as well is never standing still like because you are easier to hit so when you activate auto attack if you stand still near a minion your champion will start attacking the minion uh, like unintentionally which is bad but you know that's yeah. good because it forces you to therefore never stand still if you ever stand still you're gonna start out attacking so therefore it forces you to get into the habit of never standing still but if you have auto attack on but the champion will attack the closest target only if you stand still that's the good thing about it if you have you no, okay 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 maybe you're getting confused i know what i know where your confusion comes from okay this option here out attack can you see it yes okay this option the, on, the literally the only thing that it does is if you stand still near a target you will begin attacking it that's the only thing it does look i will move here see i start hitting now i will move again without this and i don't hit that's the only thing it does okay it has nothing to do with a right click or attack move click or anything like this that ha has nothing to do okay no stone left unturned. so this option should be on because therefore if i ever stand still i will start attacking which is bad you don't want to attack accidentally you want to attack only if you want to attack so the reason why this is a good option to have on is because then it forces you to do this all the time see i gotta move because as soon as i stop i hit accidentally and that's bad so you move always that's really good it forces you to keep moving always okay this one attack move on cursor is the one that makes you attack when you click on the ground with attack move like this you attack whatever is closer to the cursor A true professional is always aware it has nothing to do with the other one okay there there are different things it has nothing to do if if not it will attack the one nearest to your champion right yeah and that's really bad yes and that's really yeah. bad yeah so this always on this on this always off this one is really bad always off <clears throat> so our caitlin friend disappeared where's our caitlin friend yeah that was me yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna do it okay okay you can sure don't be scared you're Wait. the only one brave enough so nobody can laugh because you're not even sharing, guys. <laughs> Wait, let me pull that up. Okay, I'm seeing. How much did you measure? Uh, do you mean well, how much did you measure? Well, first step was measuring while standing still, remember? Ah, the, you want to measure standing still? Always. Okay. The first step is always standing still and measuring. El rato que gira. I play a lot of Twitch. You're from Spain? No, no, no. I'm Italian. Ah. <laughs> then it's gira. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So like this. Okay, perfect. So 58 is your measurement. So now your job is to get 58. Playing all the rules, never standing still, digging as close okay. to your champion as you can, back and forth, moving side by side. And you're not allowed, one click on the target only. Okay. So some of your clicks are kinda early. Perfect, stop, stop, stop. So yeah, see, yeah. see how you lost around 10% of your damage almost. So why? I'm going to tell you why. You lost 10% of your damage and also 10% of your distance. So if this dummy was moving, you would have done 20% less damage. Just by bad right click. So why? Because half of your clicks were too late. And what happens when you click too late on the dummy? 
your DPS goes down because you waited too long, so your attack speed is lower. That's why your DPS was not yeah. 58. And then some of your clicks, you were overcompensating by clicking too early. And you, you know what happened? You lost distance. Caitlyn stopped moving longer than she should. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. that's where, but it was overall, it was like better than 90% of my students for a first try was really good. So it has to get to 58, but uh, at the same time, make sure you don't stand still because you were overcompensating sometimes and standing still a lot. Just to not stop, the, to not bring the DPS down, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people will do that, will do like a cheat thing, which is like, in order for you to not bring the DPS down, you will just click super early, and sure, the DPS will be perfect, but at that point, you're just standing still. It's the same as the measurement, right? <clears throat> so, uh, gotta move and gotta lose the, lose the DPS. And you can trade with a lot of attack speed, and like, if you want, you can do this again with like an insane amount of attack speed and make sure you don't lose DPS while moving. It gets f more fun with more attack speed, but at the same time... Uh, It'll don't, be harder, I think. Don't overestimate how important it is to get it right at a low attack speed, okay? Last thing, you're using attack move sometimes. I think in this drill you should only use right click because the idea is that you learn to aim properly as well. So don't cheat with attack move, okay? I noticed that a lot of the times you were like missing on the dummy and then when you realized that you missed, you were hitting attack move. I saw you, right? So yeah. if you miss, you miss. Just learn to not miss instead, okay? All so, right. But overall it was really good. Better than like a lot of my students when they do it first time. Okay, anybody else have any questions before we finish? Um, I and I had a question, but it, I think you said that it was from another class because it was more like spacing. More no, than you can like tell me. You can tell me. So, you can tell me. So basically, I just wanted to ask um, because we we talked about uh, the Zyra thing. And like more than that, it's like when you play with Zyra and another champion that has higher range than you. Mm -hmm. So how you should play that if you if you wanted to trade okay. without this? There's a trick there, which is um, the reason they poke you a lot. The reason why a Zyra pokes you a lot with another champion that has poke is because you get a farm. Because think about it, if you didn't need to farm, you would just stay ten miles away under tower, and they can't poke you, right? So the first thing to understand poke is that it happens when you farm, right? Do you understand this? Like, think about it. If you don't need to farm, you would never get poked, okay? So, so yeah. So, uh, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to have a video for this. Uh, I think I have a video that I can show you this. Yeah. So there's a trick you do when you play against a champion with longer range than you in the lane. What you do is you bring the enemy minions closer to your lane. And when you do that, you can farm from further away, which means the enemy can poke you less. Okay? Especially the enemy ADC, because the enemy ADC has to farm as well. But his wave will be really far away now, so if he farms, he can't poke you. So the way you do it is really easy. You step inside the enemy minion wave, okay? Look at this. Are you watching? Yeah. Okay. So, Aphelios with Green Gun has um, 150, no, 100 range more than Kaisa. So, 650 versus 550. So, Kaisa will get poked a lot if she goes to farm. So, what she does is out attacking the Aphelios once. And when she out attacks the Aphelios once, all of the minions that are near Aphelios will walk to you. And now she can farm the minions from here instead. And here nobody will poke you ever. So it's what we call drawing minion aggro or dragging minions. Look. See the melees? Look how they move. See? See how they move? And now we can farm from here. And not only that, because he out attacked us as well, now your own melees move here. So now he has to farm from farther away. So essentially you divide the lane in two. The enemy melees or the enemy minions in general come here and your minions go there. So now instead of fighting the wave here and get poked, he has to farm here and you can farm here. This is another reason why Sarah is so much more powerful than Lawilo. Um, by the way, Ruler didn't do this properly because if you do it well, you can even bring these three as well. So you can farm these three. 
but at least he brought this too. Okay. So is that clear? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a little bit of an advanced topic, I think, but but it, it's really useful in all the lanes. In in top lane, it's really useful as well when you don't want to get like if you're playing Nasus top, the enemy is like Riven or Darius, just hit them once and walk back. You bring their minions to you, and now you farm for free. All right, thank you. <laughs> all right, all right. Any more questions, guys? Maybe I have one. Yeah. But I have I will speak very slowly because I don't know how to ask this. Yeah. Um, when you know, uh, when you are canceling, uh, when you're resetting your auto or canceling animation, when you know when you do that. So you're asking basically when exactly you should cancel the auto attack animation so that you do it well and not cancel the auto attack? Yes. So essentially, um, it's like this. Uh, here. So essentially, if you move before the... This, this white line is the projectile coming out, remember? Or if you're a melee champion, this white line is when you hit the enemy. Like your your if you're like a Garen, this white line is when your sword hits the enemy. Okay? You understand this part? Yes. Okay. So if you move before the white line, you cancel the auto attack and it never comes out. But if you move after the white line, you cancel the animation, but the auto attack is already out. So in other words, you just gotta move as soon as the projectile comes out, or you do the damage if you're melee. But there's a catch. You know how you have ping in League of Legends? Let's say you have 30 ping. Yes. If you wait until the projectile comes out, right? And then you click on the ground, you're actually going to cancel the air attack animation like 30 ms after you did the projectile, right? So it's a little bit late, right? Because of your ping. So instead, what you should do is you cancel the air attack animation by... So you move... 30 ms before the projectile comes out, or whatever ping you have. Like if you have 20 ms, 20 ms, if you have 40 ms, 40 ms. So you cancel the animation by moving, you click on the ground, the amount of ping you have before the projectile comes out. So there's no way of, like your brain doesn't know how much 40 ms is, it's just a feeling that you get. Basically just push it back as much as you can, click as early as you can to move, until you see that you actually cancel the auto attack and it's bad. And then you go like, okay, that was too early. So then you learn more or less when is the right moment instead of too early or too late. Essentially, just move as fast as you can. Like after auto attacking, just move as fast as you can. And if you cancel the animation bad and you the auto attack doesn't come out, you will be like, okay, that was too early. And try it again. Now you try it again. And this time the auto attack came out and you moved. So that was the perfect moment. So I want to show you, I have... Uh, I have a thing. I have like an example of this. I think I have a recording of me doing this, and it's like the perfect example of how to cancel the animation. It's a video that is two minutes long. I think it's this one. Give me one second. Let me pull it up to the second monitor. Just one second. 